Hello guys and welcome to the budding watch enthusiast. So typically when I do reviews on this channel, I do it after wearing the watch for about a week or two, uh, because that is really all, all the time you need in order to get your thoughts on a watch, in order to determine its quality, in order to determine uh, you know the nuts and bolts of it and to be able to make a recommendation on whether it's something that's worth purchasing uh, or not. But you can't really discern how you feel about a watch in that amount of time. That takes a little bit longer. So I think it's important to come back uh, many months later after a review to see basically like how I'm getting on with the watch. And, you know, to see how my opinions may have changed, to see what other you know nuances in the watch have popped up over time. So with that in mind, uh, let me get to my wristwatch check today. I am wearing my Sal Baltimore Limited Edition and today we are going to talk about my, my feelings, my opinions on this watch and how it's been after owning it for about six months of time. So for those of you that may have missed this, uh, I will link my full review of this watch in the description below and I'll probably also pop it up on a card right here so that you can check that out. I would encourage you to check out the review uh, to familiarize yourself with the watch. I will go over a brief overview of what Sal Baltimore is though before we get into that. So just as a brief overview, the Sal Baltimore is a small micro brand company. Uh, they're locally based in Baltimore, Maryland, where I live. The Founders Edition slash Limited Edition was the first watch that they ever released, which they did release in December of last year. And for me, of course, this watch does hold a extra bit of uh, personal sentiment. This was the first mechanical watch that I ever owned. Uh, it was the watch that really sent me down the rabbit hole in terms of learning more about watches, acquiring more watches, and eventually led me to this channel and talking to you guys today. It's fair to say that without this watch, I probably wouldn't be making this video right now. So it does hold a special place in my heart. And I still love this watch very, very much. Um, we're gonna talk about everything that I do love about it and that's been kind of reinforced uh, in, my, in my months of ownership so far with the watch. Let's talk first though about some of the stuff that I don't like about this watch. The first thing, and I touched on this in the review, and over time it has really grown to continue to kind of gnaw at me, this watch is just too tall. It is, it is taller than a couple dive watches that I own. And it is, this is supposed to be like an everyday wear watch. You know, in, in the review, I, I mentioned that it kind of straddles the line between a daily wear watch and a dress watch it, because it, it, it's, it leans ever so slightly in that dress di direction. But at 14 and a half millimeters, it is just so freaking tall. Uh, between the case and then the double dome sapphire crystal that sits on top of it, it's super tall. Um, I, I just find it to be a, a big hunk of watch on my wrist, and especially as I've gotten some other watches that have been much more slim in profile, uh, that, that's really stuck out and bothered me, that this watch is so, is so tall and you know, might not slide under a shirt cuff perfectly uh, every time. And it just, yeah, I, I just wish they had made the watch a little bit shorter. It runs counter to one of the things I'll talk about that I really like about the watch still, for, for what it is. It's a hugely tall watch. The second thing is that the crown on the watch is incredibly tiny, uh, which is funny. I mean, it looks it looks even more tiny because the case is so large, but also the fact the reason that the crown being small bugs me is because it makes it really difficult to manually wind, especially when you have bigger, thicker, you know, fingers as as I do. Uh, I know, I understand what they were going for here. The crown is not meant to stand out. It's not meant to be, you know, like a dive watch, like large crown that's easy to grip and get a hold of. But man, whenever I have to manually wind this thing, it's such a pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> it kind of hurts my fingers a little bit. I wish the crown had been just a little bit bigger uh, to make it a little bit easier to get a grip on. And I've also found over time that I really don't enjoy pairing this watch with NATO straps, and which is unfortunate because NATO straps are among my favorite style of watch straps uh, that that there is out there, and I love NATOs. And yeah, for I, I just don't enjoy pairing this watch. I think the big reason that I don't like pairing this watch with NATOs is because again, the watch is super tall as it is. NATO straps will just add that much more height to. The, the tight of the watch and makes it stick up that much more. And plus, I think this watch looks absolutely perfect 
on a leather strap. I think a leather strap was the strap that this watch was absolutely meant for. Uh, it's also worked pretty well on a metal bracelet, uh, which I've tried before uh, using like a mesh bracelet. I also have it on a rubber strap here today. Um, I think it works fine on a rubber strap as well. I don't think this particular rubber strap that I have uh, pairs that great with it. This is a Benetto, uh, a Benetto Cinturini rubber strap, but it has a lot of holes in it. I think a more solid piece, maybe like a Tropic strap would, would work well with this. But yeah, NATO straps, I love wearing them, but I found myself not wearing them as frequently uh, with the Sal Baltimore. Those are the only negative things that have really stuck out of my mind. Let's talk about what I've really loved about this watch in these six months. Um, I, I complained about the watch being too tall, and that is true, but that being said, the case on this watch is the standout feature, I think. The, the barrel style case that you find on here gives the watch such personality, uh, makes it stand out so uniquely from other watches that are in the marketplace. I still have yet to encounter a watch in person that has a similar style case to this. It, it, it really does scream personality. It's one of the first things that draws people into the watch. I also love the lugs on this watch as well. But yeah, I, I've, I've grown to still really enjoy like looking at the side profile of this watch as well. It just, it's, it's really cool and, and again, very unique. That same uniqueness extends to the dial. I still have not found a dial that, that again, quite captures what this one does. I love the, the legibility of the numerals. Um, just the way it's laid out is so smart and so intelligent and, and again, just really satisfying to look at. It continues to be uh, one of the most unique watches that I still have not only, not only owned, but have seen uh, to this point in collecting so far. It certainly does stand out. One of the things I praised in my review was the versatility of this watch, how it does work in a variety of situations, be it a more formal setting, be it a more casual everyday setting. That has proven to be true. There hasn't really been anything that I've worn this watch with that it hasn't paired with. Now that being said, I haven't really had to dress in anything super formal yet. Haven't had an occasion uh, in the past six months to need to wear a suit for anything. So I still can't speak to its uh, efficiency as a dress watch, but I will say of all the watches that's in my collection, uh, this is probably the first one that I would go to if I needed a more dressier watch, even despite the, the size of it, I think it will still work very well. And also the movement has been surprisingly solid. Um, the Miyota 9015 movement that's contained inside of it is kind of a boring movement. It's used by tons and tons of micro brand watchmakers, but it is performed admirably. Uh, I've been, it's, it's fallen within uh, minus, anywhere between minus seven to minus 10 seconds per day since I've owned the watch. It, it's remained remarkably consistent. And even comparing it like my Squally 1545 has an ETA, I think 2824 inside of it. And this watch has been outperforming that one like crazy. Like it's not even been close. It's been beating the crap out of it. So, but yeah, overall, uh, I have definitely been continuing to enjoy this watch as much today uh, as I did when I first received it. Obviously, when I first got it, I didn't own as many watches. It was getting a lot more wrist time, but this does still find its way onto my wrist, uh, usually at least one or two days per week. Uh, it's been fun to wear. My wife does steal it all the time as well from me, so she's enjoyed wearing it as well. And again, to be fair, I'm going to be a little bit biased in my, you know, in my fondness of this watch, partly because of the sentimental value it holds for me. Uh, but again, it's, that doesn't change the fact that this has been an excellent watch um, that has performed just as well six months later uh, as it did the day that I got it. Still a watch that I would recommend wholeheartedly to anyone uh, looking, especially if you've been looking to try a micro brand manufacturer, you don't know which one to go to, the Sal Baltimore Founders Edition uh, is an excellent choice still that I, would, that I would still give my highest recommendation to for sure. And what's even better about this is that since I've reviewed this watch and since I've owned it, there's actually a ton of different options now that you can get as far as different dials, uh, not only different dial colors, but there's some dials now with sunburst effects that you can pick up for this watch as well. And if this style of this watch doesn't really speak to you, I know that Sal Baltimore uh, has a dive watch, the Torsk Diver that is coming 
uh, later this year as well. That looks uh, very cool so far too. That's gonna have the same movement inside of it. Uh, it looks to have a, a, a case that's just as unique as this one as well in terms of other dive watches. And that looks really cool as well. I'll, I'll also leave a link uh, down to that below if you are interested in, in learning more about that watch. Sal Baltimore Founders Edition slash limited edition has still been a, a joy to wear. I've really enjoyed having it and it's one that I'm sure I will continue enjoying uh, for many, many months and years to come. So that is it for this video, folks. Uh, do me a favor if you found this video entertaining or informative, hit that like button right there. And also if you have not subscribed to the channel, do me a huge favor, hit the red subscribe button and ring the bell right next to it. That way you will be notified whenever I post new videos. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do that at budding watch enthusiast so that you can see my wrist picks and stuff that I do post on there uh, very frequently. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you all the next time.